I'm Austin Leak, and welcome to my shit show. Welcome back to the shit show, kids. Today we're going to talk about studs and traction. That's right. We're getting all hooked up with some Woody's traction here. Now, I don't claim to be the most knowledgeable person. I don't claim to be a wizard. I don't claim to know everything. I just know what I know from what I've learned through the years and what seems to work best for me. Now, your stud pattern, stud count, all that is personal preference on how the driver wants to wants the sled to handle. And it's also dependent upon what class you're running, what size motor you're running. All that goes into consideration when it comes to studying a track. For my application, I sprint race this and I do the mini enduros within the Myra series with this sled. 600 cc's, um, 336 studs in here equals out to seven studs per bar. And as you see, seven is an odd number and I'm not running any single backers on my track. Here's why. I've been taught through the years to run double backers for sprint racing because you get more penetration and there's less flex in the track. Now, you're probably also noticing that I don't have any studs running down the middle of my track. And some people may argue that fact saying it's not right because you want to have the biggest scratch pattern you, you can have when you're taking off. So if your track slips a little bit on the ice and you look down, there isn't a spot in that track where studs aren't slicing through the ice. My theory behind that is running your studs closer to the track windows as you can to have the most amount of traction possible. The reason why I say that is because your two rails are providing all the weight of the machine, or the majority of the weight of the machine, from the track to the ice, which means you're going to have the most penetration you can possibly get right underneath of the rails or as close to the rails as possible. So putting studs in the center of your track if you, if you imagine your track and as you take off, you're, you don't have the support underneath the track in the center and your studs won't bite as well as what they would being closer to the rails. There's, you're not going to get a whole lot of flex here and here compared to right here. And we're talking a minimal amount, but it's enough to make a difference in my opinion. That's why you see a lot of champ sleds, or probably all of the champ sleds, have hooker plates and hooker studs. If you don't know what that is, um, it's a really time consuming process. It's kind of expensive, but you need to grind down the rubber that's in between the track clip edges. And then people will weld a flat plate with an internal thread and, and they can stud their hook or they can put their hooker studs into that plate. They do that because you're getting the most amount of traction you possibly can get out of your machine with them directly under the rails. I run double backer plates because they will provide the least amount of flex between the, the backer plate and the track itself. If you run singles, you don't have that surface area that you normally would have with a single backer plate. One other thing I wanted to talk about was track tension. Now, this can play a huge factor into into an ill handling sled. My opinion from racing is you want to have a pretty tight track. If you, if you hear that, the clips are slap, slapping on the slides. This track's pretty tight. With that being said, running a loose track can cause an ill handling sled, can cause a push coming out of a corner. For example, say you have your sled set up on the ground and you only have, say, eight bars on the ground. So you, eight bars on the ground, you have eight rows of studs penetrating the ice. Now, if your track is loose and you have a high horsepower machine, 
your front driver is going to throw that track to the ground and say, say you set your sled up for eight, eight bars in the ground. Now you could potentially double that and have 16 bars going in, into the ice, which is going to take some of the ski pressure off the sled and, and get you into a push coming off the corner. Some people will argue with low horsepower sleds that if you run a track too tight, you're robbing horsepower. True to an extent. Um, I don't know what that variable is. I haven't seemed to come across that or been like, man, this sled's slow because the track's too tight. I just know that you don't want to run your track too loose because it will cause you to push coming off the corner. Better for hole shots, but not for cornering. One other topic I wanted to discuss with running a loose track is track derailment. If you're coming off of a corner, you're on the gas, your track's really loose, and you say you could be sideways coming off the corner, your track is being thrown right to the ground from the driver, and you have all of that force from the studs and, and the G-force of the sled going one way, it can cause your track to derail and lock up, which could poten potentially cause you to wreck, flip, go upside down. You don't want that. So just make sure that you have your track tension properly and you'll be all right. I don't know that tension just from years of experience. I've gone by feel. I don't have a track tension tool or anything like that, but um, you kind of learn as you go what's good and what's not. I want to say thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there's anything that I missed, let me know in the comments. Uh, if you like what you're watching, please click the subscribe button. I don't tell you guys to subscribe a whole lot because I feel like that's needy, but going through YouTube analytics, 23% of my subscribers watch the videos. The rest are just people that must see the thumbnail on the right side of the screen. So that would be greatly appreciated. And if you have any more ideas on technical setup, technical tips, whatever that may be, uh, let me know. I'm more than willing to do a video. This is my first kind of educational video. I know I'll have people out there saying that I'm wrong in some aspects, but it's just what I know and what I'm trying to share. The bigger we can get the sport, the better. <laughs> it seems like the sport's growing every year and I wanna keep that going. And if I can do anything to help um, get people to, to build more sleds, sweet. I know I've had people reach out to me, ask me questions on building sleds and rules and all that. If you reach out to me, ask me questions on rules, I don't know all the rules for all the classes. I kind of just know the rules for the class that I built my sled for. So I highly recommend you going to the ISR website, looking up the class rules for whatever class that may be within whatever circuit and make sure that you're abiding by those rules. Um, one last thing, hit up Woody's Traction for one of these uh, stud gauges, tell you whether or not you're legal. It's got this little indent here. It's three eighths of an inch. You can't have your studs protruding past the lugs more than three eighths of an inch. Otherwise you'll be DQ'd. Uh, anything less than that is fine. This also has a carbide gauge on it. This V in this carbide gauge is 60 degrees. If you have any less degree than 60, it's technically illegal. You can be DQ'd for that. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's it. It's a wrap. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.